that's interesting about Carmen. Well, thank you, Bouquet. You're always so thoughtful. This may be a great day for France. <clears throat> and might I suggest that if His Majesty has a son, that this son might need a tutor? I have noticed that you also think far ahead. My only thought is to serve to the limit of my poor ability. His Majesty the King! How much longer do we have to wait? Is there no news yet? Not yet, Your Majesty. A matter of this kind demands patience, even from a king. For a cardinal, you're not very consoling in a crisis. <laughs> D'Artagnan, do you remember that morning we were getting ready to fight the Austrian army? Yes, sire. Very well. I felt a lot braver that morning. <laughs> if Your Majesty pleases. It's a boy, a beautiful boy. It has pleased Almighty God, King of Heaven, to bless the union of His Majesty, King Louis XIII of France, and our dearly beloved Queen, by giving to them and to you a son. This is the heir to the throne of France. Send for the King at once. The king? Impossible. Listen. Colbert, then. Yes, that's it. Colbert. He'll know what to do. Colbert. Where's Monsieur Colbert, please? On the balcony with His Majesty. has given birth to a second child. A second child? Yes, a son, a twin. Another son. Shall I take this other son to the king? Impossible. Who knows of this? Only the midwife and myself. No one else must know. Must you take him, too? Your Majesty knows, better than I, that your sons belong to France. Follow me. Yes, but Her Majesty. I will answer for Her Majesty. Yes, my lord. The messenger said it was urgent. What is it? It is my duty to present to your majesty your second son. Fate has given France twin dauphin.
Two sons, two heirs to the throne of France. Your Majesty knows there can be only one Dauphin of France. To any other man in this kingdom, twin sons would be a blessing. Only to me, a king, could they be a curse. Worse than a curse, sir. Two sons would mean civil war. Self-seeking men pitting brother against brother. The future of France depends on this moment. On your being strong enough to think as a king rather than as a father. Of your sons, only one can rule. Colbert, I cannot order a death warrant for my own son. That isn't necessary, sire. Send him away. No one need know. Even he must never know. With whom? Is there a man in all the world with whom such a secret would be safe? Yes, sir. One man. D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan? Must I lose my son and my best friend as well? D'Artagnan is my right arm. He is also my friend, sire. But you must give him the child. Send him home to Gascony. Settle an income on him. Permit him to raise the boy as his own. Then France will be safe. shoulder to shoulder for France. How many times has the life of the King of France been safe in your hands? My friend D'Artagnan, will you do this for me? I am a soldier, sire. you, my friend. Go now, quickly. In days to come, sire, he may ask his father's name. Tell him his father was a man who gave everything for France and was your very good friend. Name him Philip, after me. The doctor and the midwife. It's a pity there's no D'Artagnan for them. like to double the wage of Fouquet. But the rope always breaks the fourth time. Your Majesty is unusually lucky. I'm a most unusual person. <laughs> but it didn't break. And it always breaks the fourth time. Are you sure you didn't tamper with that rope, Fouquet? Your Majesty.
I regret intruding upon your majesty's amusement. I'll double the wager on the next one, Fouquet. Monsieur Colbert here took it upon himself to countermand the other executions. For what reason? I have the honor to inform your majesty that Her Royal Highness Princess Maria Theresa entered Paris this morning. Surely the arrival of your fiancé should not be attended by, by hangings. But don't they hang people in Spain? <laughs> or does everyone pay his taxes? <laughs> well, she'll get used to it. Particularly if the tax on salt is not rescinded. But Fouquet told me I could raise millions with a little pinch of salt. Such a beautiful tax. So sure. No one can live without salt. History shows that the people have a way of going on living, no matter what. Uh, speaking of the salt tax uh, reminds me. I'm afraid I'll have to adopt drastic measures in Gascony. The inhabitants of the town of Tartas made some ridiculous claim to exemption from all taxes, and they resisted your majesty's tax collectors. Resisted? More than resisted. They put your majesty's representatives to flight. They were led by a man named D'Artagnan. Must we always be annoyed by these rebels? I know the man, sire. He was captain of your father's musketeers, and he spoke the truth. For services to the crown, your father gave him the village of Tartas, free of taxes. Such a reward probably grew out of some special service. Collect the taxes in Gascony and arrest the rebels. I've anticipated both of Your Majesty's commands. <laughs> Clever Fouquet. I seem to have an engagement with Mademoiselle de la Valliere. I find her so very useful in relieving me of such tiresome problems of state. <laughs> Quite interesting, this Gascony situation, don't you think? I watched your career with great interest, Fouquet. I know you to be ambitious, avaricious, and dangerous. But not until now did I know you to be entirely without honor. Without honor? Why? You knew very well the identity of D'Artagnan and of the men with him. Oh, yes, certainly. Including Philip. And yet, to carry a favor with the king, you would betray a sacred trust. A secret which has been kept up to now. My dear Colbert, how can you say such a thing? You should know better than anyone that a certain secret transformed me from a cardinal's messenger to a king's minister. Keeping secrets is my business. And are your intentions one of your secrets too? Not at all. I intend arresting Philip and D'Artagnan and hanging them as rebels. It's a compliment to you, my friend. Colbert, you're a very clever man. You have a most annoying habit of always bringing about the things you wish to bring about. For instance, this marriage with Maria Theresa, which does not suit me at all. The union of France with Spain and Austria is necessary to the security and future of France. But I'm not interested in the future of France. I'm interested in the future of Fouquet. Who knows? Someday you may have certain plans for Philip. Well, that would be most unfortunate for me, but uh, don't worry. I intend keeping this secret. When I hang Philip, no one will know that he's the twin brother of the king. Before you hang him, the world will know who he is. Shh. Remember. Secrets. <laughs> Gentlemen, musketeers! Yeah. Uh. <coughs> he means you too. Oh. <laughs> According to the tradition governing these occasions, I wish to express my pleasure at the honor of having you help me arrive at the ripe old age of 22. Here, here, here. To France. To my father, who died very too soon. my four godfathers, who reared me so carefully in the best tradition of the King's Musketeers. The Musketeers. Ah. Mm. I claim the next toast to our very accomplished godson, the best blade in France. Next to me, of course. Oh. <laughs> and the most brilliant pupil 
in languages and the sciences that I have ever tutored. And whose skill at wrestling is excelled by only one other man, and I, uh, I'm too modest to mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> and who excels even me in the more romantic pastimes, including uh, dice shaking. <laughs> Sure, this is D'Artagnan's house. How could I mistake it? I've been here before. You realize the people of our own town of Tatas are the only Frenchmen who aren't starving and in rags? Which is too good to last long. Remember, we've already had one encounter with the royal tax collectors. <coughs> to which we put a period with a sword point. Oh! <laughs> I can't remember inviting any other guests. Captain D'Artagnan, formerly the King's Musketeers. And Lord of Tartus, by order of Louis XIII. By order of His Majesty Louis XIV, I arrest you for high treason and assault on His Majesty's officers. <laughs> you mean His Majesty's robbers? I order you to surrender in the name of the King. Softly, my friend. In Tartus, I administer the high, the middle, and the low justice. I make the arrests. Isn't the King becoming frugal? Only nine men. There's 90 more outside. Flatterer. Seize them! <laughs> Maria Theresa, Infanta of Spain, Princess of Austria, and His Excellency, Count Mendoza, Ambassador of the King of Spain. Your Majesty, I present His Excellency, the Spanish Ambassador. Your Majesty. We are pleased to receive you. I have the honor to present Her Royal Highness, Maria Theresa. My mother, Monsieur Fouquet, I trust Your Royal Highness made a comfortable journey. Monsieur Colbert, whom you sent to welcome us, was most considerate. Why did you permit me to think I was sacrificing myself for the good of the state, when I find her beautiful? Do I make you nervous? No. No, Your Majesty. It was the cannon. Oh, uh, you'll get used to that. They seem always to be firing cannons in my honor. You're very lovely, my dear. Of course you're nervous. I know just how you feel, but you'll feel at home very quickly. I'll try very hard. 
Your Majesty's dinner is served. We always have a family gathering on my birthday. Just a few special guests. Mademoiselle. Forgive me, Your Royal Highness. May I present Mademoiselle de la Varrière? You might congratulate me. It's not only my birthday, but I'm engaged to be married. Congratulations, Your Majesty. I hope Your Royal Highness will be very happy. Penny, for your thoughts. They're not worth a great deal. I was just remembering Your Majesty mentioned a family dinner. Mademoiselle Lavalier? Oh, I always think of her as one of the family. I hope you enjoyed your journey through France. It was slightly confusing, Your Majesty. I find it very difficult to associate the poverty of the provinces with the splendor of the palace. Well, the people of France are notorious misers. But I am not a miser. I have been taught to believe that when the people wear rags and the king and his court wear velvet, the result is always disastrous. <laughs> May I ask why you are so interested in the people of France? Perhaps it's because I've agreed to become the Queen of France. My father considers himself a servant of the state. It's different with me. In France, I am the state. A gentle protest against the salt tax, no doubt. That was for His Majesty's birthday. Tomorrow he dies. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Who did? I don't know. I don't know. Take him to the Bastille. We'll find out. So they don't like the salt tax. Double it. Revive him. Proceed. No, no. I can't stand it. I'll tell. I'll tell. You see, the glove always works, usually on the first or second finger. I remember a very stubborn fellow. He withstood four fingers until we came to his thumb. I almost pardoned him. Tomorrow, when His Majesty goes to the cathedral to light a candle, he will be assassinated. By whom? I don't know, sir. I only overheard them talking just before I was arrested. I was not one of them. When and where? I don't know, sir. I don't know. I don't know. He may be telling the truth, sire. He is telling the truth. Once they start talking, they tell everything they know. It would be well if my Lord High Constable would tell me a few things about this assassination. I'm doing everything I can, sire. It's not enough. early to be sure I'm not late in keeping my rendezvous with the assassins. But, Your Majesty, it's madness. You can't expose yourself like this. Maria Lord Constable, you've said the same thing at least 50 times. But it doesn't change the situation. Today is my late lamented father's name day. Tradition demands that I light a candle to his memory in the cathedral. A king fears tradition more than he fears assassination. There's a chance for me to escape assassination, but no chance to escape tradition. It's one of those unfortunate things connected with being king. But, Your Majesty, give me more time. If only to discover when and where they intend to strike. You've had a thousand men trying to discover that small point since last night. And it's still a secret. In exactly an hour of 20 minutes, it will no longer be a secret. No one knows of this? No, sire. Just you and I, and the assassins. And 
happy to report the Gascony business is finished, Your Majesty. I have the rebels below. Gascony? Rebels? Why, yes, Your Majesty. D'Artagnan and the men who assaulted Your Majesty's officers. Why do you annoy me with prisoners from Gascony? Haven't you learned yet what to do with rebels? It shall be done. The moment I have Your Majesty's signature to the order of execution. What if my carriage is ready? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Majesty is hanging a most interesting prisoner. What? Fouquet neglected to tell Your Majesty that on the way from Gascony, he was cheered repeatedly by villagers. <laughs> and just now, in the courtyard below, your own officers saluted him. What for? Probably because of the striking resemblance the prisoner bears to Your Majesty. Uh, didn't Fouquet mention the fact? <laughs> I claim to detect any resemblance. You mean they cheered because they thought the prisoner was I? Yes, sire. Hmm. That's interesting. And very unusual. Does he really resemble me? It's astonishing. Except for a moustache, he might be your double. <laughs> but I think I'd like to see this fellow. <laughs> but, Your Majesty, it's absurd. I feel in the mood for absurdities. Bring him to me. But... Bring him, I said. Uh, why not bring them all? They breed a more dashing type of rebel in Gascony. Your Majesty might find them interesting, too. <laughs> Bring them all. Your eyes did not deceive you, Colbert. He does look like me. Except, of course, for the silly moustache. I can hardly believe it. I also have a slight scar, a souvenir from one of Your Majesty's tax collectors. So you're the Gascon rebel who objects to paying taxes and goes about cutting down my men. Your Majesty could have taught your men better manners. <laughs> Has a sense of humor, too. <coughs> yes. A very pointed sense of humor, Your Majesty. We took a troop of Your Majesty's best men to curb it. Remove them to the best, you. Oh, but this one. I wish to talk to him. What we do with them depends upon our conversation. Very well, Your Majesty. Take them away. How about this one? March! <laughs> Come here. Do you know what happens to rebels? I usually hang them, so I've heard. I see that you're quite fond of your friends. Very fond, sir. You could be quite useful to me. For instance, at the moment, my carriage is waiting to take me to the cathedral to light a candle in memory of my father. It's very gracious of His Majesty to remember his father. It would be most amusing if you performed the ceremony. Impersonated me? I'm willing to do anything to save my friend, sir. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. Suppose you begin by riding to the cathedral in my carriage. Without the moustache, of course. I left Gascony quite suddenly, so I'll have to borrow Your Majesty's razor. And his clothes. But hurry.
go on. Kill me like you've killed the rest of France. Why should I wish to kill you? But your majesty, this is assassination. These aren't enemies you're riding down. They're the people of France. Since when has the king of France had cause to fear Frenchmen? What's your name, my friend? Jean-Paul, your majesty. Why did you want to kill the king? Well, why do you want to kill us? Oh, your majesty, this man is no assassin. Last night, his baby died of hunger. And this man is no murderer, your majesty. The day before yesterday, his wife died. No medicine, no doctor. All these people have suffered, your majesty. But what does your majesty know about suffering? You live in a palace. I want you to believe I'll do everything I can to change all that. Oh, sire, if we could only believe that. The king of France has made many mistakes. The greatest in losing common touch with his people. I'll pray that the king be forgiven his mistake. God bless your majesty. Vive le roi! Vive le roi! Auditorium nostrum in nomine domini. We praise Dominus opus tuum. I can see it you go. Forgive my intrusion. I insisted I be allowed to enter. I just heard how you proved yourself a true king. Strangely enough, I never felt more like a king. I came the moment I knew you were in danger. Why? Is it not my duty as Queen of France to be at the side of the king in time of danger? The king would be an ungrateful wretch if he failed to appreciate such a sense of duty. But a most unfortunate man if it was only duty that brought you to his side. The king has shown very little pleasure at the prospect of my company. At this moment, I pray that the king be forgiven his mistakes. I, too, wish to light a candle. Not in commemoration, but in thanksgiving. I'm sure you understand why it's better for you to live at Fontainebleau. The Spanish ambassador is becoming just a little difficult. You're quite sure it's not the Spanish princess. <laughs> I'm rather disappointed in the Spaniards. I've heard they're a very hot-blooded race. Not if Maria Therese is an example. Yes, I've noticed. Perhaps you require special encouragement. I became king on my fifth birthday. By my sixth, I'd learnt not to offer encouragement. Sooner or later, everyone comes to me. Pity you did not also learn how to be in two places at one time. I may surprise you. Remember, I am a most unusual person. Really? His Majesty? I regret to inform your Royal Highness that His Majesty is engaged. Oh, but if you tell him who it is. I'm sorry. But when I left His Majesty half an hour ago on our return from the cathedral, he seemed most anxious to continue our conversation. I know. 
I know. Kings have such short memories. But I'm sure it would not disturb him to know that I... Your Royal Highness, I have learned through long experience never to disturb His Majesty for anyone when he is with uh, Mademoiselle de la Valliere. Thank you. His Majesty need have no fear of my disturbing him again. My father, the king, guard it with your life. Yes, your royal highness. Go now. If it please your excellency. Yes, 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 yes. Well, what happened? The princess was furious. She stormed in and immediately wrote a dispatch to her father. Her father? What did she say? I don't know. I couldn't get close enough to see. You should have done better, fool. Now I have to find out what she wrote. Get out. I've been searching everywhere for you. I suppose I should feel honored. Did you not have an engagement with me in the salon to hear music? I think it's a good form to keep the king waiting. I could hardly expect your majesty to remember a thing so unimportant as an engagement with me to hear music. But it's very important, at least to the musicians. I don't find myself in a mood for music. In the past few hours, my appreciation of the beautiful has suffered a great deal. I wouldn't say that. That's the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. But the moment I leave you, I completely forget what you wore. And who wore it? I'll be able to remember nothing but how beautiful you were. Won't you sit down? She's not always so preoccupied. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking that after all, it may not be necessary for you to go to Fontainebleau. But the Spanish ambassador. There's one thing the Spanish ambassador does not know, that I am a very unusual person. just made a great discovery. The stars are very beautiful in the proper setting. Your Majesty has never given me cause to suspect him of romantic inclinations. Lately, I've been made aware that the King has been guilty of many sins of omission. Why were you angry? Because I should hate you, thoroughly. And I can't. At least there's still hope if you must force yourself to hate me. Perhaps because I've been very lonely. I'm a stranger in a strange land. A very beautiful and greatly loved stranger. To be queen, I had to leave everything I loved. I had hoped that perhaps the king might sometimes forget I was queen. And remember I'm also a woman. You were afraid the king would forget you were a woman? How could any man forget that? I think twice the king did remember. Once in the cathedral, and now. When kings were created, they were not given godlike qualities to save them from mistakes. Haven't you ever found yourself sorry for a king? Yes. I'm beginning to realize that princesses also make mistakes. But one can forget any mistake a princess might make. Not when it's in writing. <laughs> Your 
Majesty, I find myself in possession of a most confidential and urgent message from Her Royal Highness Maria Teresa to her father. I uh, thought Your Majesty might be interested. For Maria Teresa? Yes. How do you find yourself in possession of it? The courier who carried it met with a most unfortunate accident. Your usual type of accident, I suppose? No, no, sire. Much better than usual. Did you read this? Uh, well, no, that is uh, not official. So I'm cruel, arrogant, a spendthrift, a liar, and a Turk. Well, of course, you'll forgive her. She merely does not understand your majesty. Forgive her? The Spanish ambassador demands an audience with your majesty. You see what happens when you encourage barbarians. He demands. Even among barbarians, a king's courier may travel in safety. I protest with all vehemence in the name of my king, the cold murder of his messenger. My dear ambassador, what are you saying? I am saying that a courier carrying a letter from Her Royal Highness the Princess Maria Theresa to the King of Spain was murdered. His body robbed and thrown into a ditch. Why was I not told of this? It's ghastly. Impossible. You're sure Your Excellency is not exaggerating? His body lies at my house. I trust you will accept my apology. If my fiancée will rewrite her letter, I will guarantee its delivery. Was it uh, an important letter? It was a letter from a daughter to a father. Oh, yes. Probably mentioning her complete happiness here and the eagerness with which she looks forward to becoming the Queen of France. I hope she included my warmest remembrances. I've no doubt she did speak of you, sire. She probably told her father that I was cruel, arrogant, a spendthrift. But pardon me your indignation. Please assure the King of Spain that I will discover the perpetrator of this outrage and will know how to reward him. I will convey your assurances to my sovereign. <laughs> I assured the ambassador that I would reward the perpetrator of the outrage. Yes, I think it would look very well there. Your Majesty. <laughs> Oh, uh, I neglected to inform Your Majesty that Her Royal Highness is engaged in packing her trunks. Her Royal Highness is saving us the trouble of having it done for her. But what of the Spanish alliance, which means so much to Colbert? I have decided to prefer the English alliance. After all, a navy is just as important as an army. It will be very difficult to explain that to Colbert. I have no intention of explaining it to Colbert. In fact, I suddenly feel the need to escape from matters of state. Yes, definitely, I will go to Fontainebleau. Lovely place, Fontainebleau. Hmm, lovely. His Excellency, Count Mendoza. Well, I suppose he pleaded ignorance of the entire affair. It's a most delicate situation, Your Royal Highness. I cannot understand this man. In one moment he holds my hand and makes love to me almost making me believe him. And in the next, he murders one of my servants. Murderer or not, he knows the contents of your letter. Good. I'm glad. I hope every word infuriates and humiliates him as much as it did me when I wrote it. I hope you bring me liberty. More than liberty. I bring you opportunity. All I need is opportunity. Philip, I knew your father very well. You knew my father? What was he like? It's the sorrow of my life that I never knew him. He was a great man. No sacrifice for his country was too difficult. And you can follow in his footsteps. An hour ago, in rage and disgust, Her Royal Highness Princess Maria Theresa left for Spain. You mean she ran away from Louis? Yes. Good. But I am here to ask you to follow her and bring her back. Bring her back to such a man? Never. Your father would have forgotten his personal feelings and remembered only his duty to France. But it's insanity. Only the king could bring her back. I am offering you an opportunity to be king, if only for one day. France needs a good king, if only to stand on the balcony before the people for the betrothal ceremony, long enough to proclaim the union between Spain and France. King for one day. In one minute, the king could free D'Artagnan and my friends. I would only need to be king for one day for my purpose. And for mine. 
Majesty descended to highway robbery in person. If I have, I'm merely following your example. After all, you're robbing me of your presence. I forbid you to enter my carriage. There must be some mistake. I thought I was the king of France and gave the command. You might at least have said goodbye. Goodbye. We're going to miss you. France will not be the same. Why are you going? How dare you ask me such a question? I dare because France and I both love you. Love? You don't know the meaning of the word. You never loved anyone but yourself. What kind of man are you? In one moment you speak of love while at the same time you're murdering my courier. I'll never again believe anything you say or do. Will you please believe that I know nothing of your courier? Believe you? When you quoted from my letter to the ambassador? But I never saw your letter. On my honor. On your royal honor? More than my royal honor. On my sacred honor. I do not believe you. Well, then, perhaps it's just as well that you are returning to Spain. You are hardly fitted to become the Queen of France. You haven't learned that the problems of the nation and its people are more important than the problems of any individual. I do not need lessons in duty or conduct from you. If this were the army, your retreat would be called desertion. Cowardice in the face of the enemy. If I were your enemy, It's so easy taking you by the hand and running away. The trouble with being king is that one can never run away, not even with you. I didn't think your majesty was the running away type. With anyone. Dear lady, believe me, if we could escape our destiny by my forgetting that I was ever king of France, by taking you by the hand and going off with you across those fields, we would descend from this coach forever and I would be the happiest man in the world far happier than I ever expect to be as king. I wish I could believe you. Did you ever dream with your eyes wide open? I used to dream a long, long time ago. I want you to dream of a balcony. And under that balcony, thousands of faces looking up at you with adoration and affection. I want you to hear the voice of a cardinal saying to those people, Heaven is pleased to join Spain with France. I want you to see me beside you at that moment. I must be dreaming. I do believe you. Heaven is pleased to join Spain with France. Do you, Maria Teresa, take this man to be your betrothed? I, Maria Teresa, take thee, Louis, to be my betrothed. And do you, Louis, take this woman to be your betrothed? I, Louis, take thee, Maria Teresa, to be my betrothed. I find myself wishing that this were the marriage ceremony, instead of just the betrothal. Then I could add, to have the hold. Let me congratulate you, my friend. But then, you've always had a most annoying habit of bringing about the things you wish to bring about. Most amusing comedy, worthy of so great a playwright. As a fellow playwright, you understand how narrow the line is dividing comedy from tragedy. Quite right. 
and I'm afraid His Majesty's Executioner will provide the tragedy when this charming little comedy is finished. His Majesty's Executioner could provide the tragedy before the comedy is finished. Remember our secrets. You and I know that the King's of Fontainebleau, but the Executioner doesn't. One word from Philip. His Majesty left for Fontainebleau an hour ago. He'll arrive there before you do. Say to him that the announcement of his betrothal to Her Royal Highness Maria Theresa has caused great rejoicing among the people. Ride fast. His Majesty will be most anxious to receive such news. Pardon, Majesty, this is the cell. They are desperate men, Majesty. <laughs> I'm quite used to dealing with desperate men. No, no, sire. I insist. I shall go first. <laughs> On your knees, dogs, His Majesty the King! So, these are the rebels. We regret our ignorance of Your Majesty's visit, or we'd have received you in greater honor. I trust you gentlemen have enjoyed our uh, hospitality? Very much. We've received every consideration we expected. I'm glad to see you're entirely happy. We'd be much happier if we had news of Philip. I suggest that your majesty treat him well, just in the event that we escape hanging. Your majesty, he means by that that we're very fond of Philip. I don't understand how anyone could be fond of such a fellow. I find him tiresome, ill-tempered, and inclined to be a fool. Your majesty has never had the pleasure of meeting him at the point of a sword. Leave us. They may have secrets. Yes, Your Majesty. Certainly, Your Majesty. Don't you know me? You recognize this? There's no time for celebration. This is the only way I could free you. I've written an order for your release. There are arms, horses, everything outside. Remember the little inn in Bordeaux? Wait for me there. I can't get back. These are innocent men. Here's my order for their release. See that it's carried out. Immediately. Yes, Your Majesty. That is all. You understand. You must go quickly. Even now, it may be too late. I was king for your object. You wouldn't have me forget mine. By now, D'Artagnan, Aramis, Porthos, and Athos are riding southward on the four best horses in France. They're gone. It wasn't very difficult. I merely walked into the Bastille. The Bastille? It's a very dismal place. I was glad to get out of it myself. I should say so. But now you must go quickly. No, not yet. Before I abdicate, I must say goodbye to the one person who I hope will be sorry that my reign is over. Philip, go while you can. Everything's ready. A horse, money, passport. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate everything you've done for me. I hope France will appreciate everything you've done for her. Remember, we do not act until he's clear of the city. But, Excellency, I do not understand. Capture the king? I don't require you to understand. I understand. Your 
Forgive me for calling so late. But I felt I had to see you. Say good night. Tonight I stood with you on a balcony and kissed you. I want you to know I'll remember how beautiful you were till the moment of my death. Louis, you have such a frightened look. If I am frightened, it's at the thought of losing you. Losing me? Kings are strange men. It's true they have short memories and are capable of dealing deep wounds. Never trust the king completely. Not even Louis. Stand aside, Fouquet. How dare you attack the king? Your majesty, who could dream of you stealing out of the palace alone like a criminal? Why, I mistook you for a common thief. You might have been badly hurt, even killed. Well, now that you know who I am, stand aside. I couldn't possibly permit your majesty to take such risks. It would be much better if your majesty would return to the palace willingly. I'm beginning to understand why you are so valuable to the king. Efficient. Then they've had a lot of practice. I should have taken Pookie's advice and hanged you in the first place. You are equally guilty. Your Majesty could hardly expect me to know that you were absent when you do not see fit to tell me. Strange that such an impromptu impersonation accomplished all your desires. All, oh, sire. Isn't it enough that you compromised me with Spain? Made me a laughing stock? The only unfortunate thing for you both is that I am about to have the last laugh. This time I'll wager the rope will not break. I've always said your majesty is unusually lucky. I feel gratified that my end will at least be a sporting proposition. I live my life the same way. It's only by chance that I am on the wrong end of the rope. I regret having to ask you to precede your friends whom you so cleverly set at liberty, but I'll see that they follow you quickly. That is also a sporting proposition. I'm glad the odds in their favor are much greater than in mine. Call the guard of honor. We must escort the ex-king to the scaffold with proper ceremony. Yes, your majesty, and of course, with rolling drums. By all means, with rolling drums. We might also fire a cannon or two. I appreciate the honor. It grieves me to prevent such a touching ceremony. But the hanging of Philip is quite impossible. Impossible? My dear Colbert, not even your hanging is impossible. Mine, no, sire. But his, yes. Not even the king may shed royal blood. Royal blood? I am saving your majesty the embarrassment of hanging your twin brother. Brother? It seems that you've outlived your usefulness. Not yet, sire. I hope. Do you expect me to believe such an insane lie? In the past, you've been more clever, Colbert. But never more truthful, sire as your majesty's friend Fouquet will testify. You see, we were both present at your birth and his. I, by right, Fouquet, as usual. Tell his majesty Fouquet <coughs> how his father, King Louis XIII, sent his twin son Philip to Gascony with D'Artagnan and how, quite by chance, Louis became king. I suppose you have further convincing proof. 
If your majesty is not convinced as he stands face to face with his own likeness, I shall be glad to present the final unimpeachable proof. With your majesty's permission, of course. I hope it's a pleasant surprise. I promise your majesty will not be disappointed. require further proof. It would have been better, madam, if you had stayed in your convent. Why do you demand vengeance on a boy who has committed no crime but to be born your twin? Kings do not control these things. Destiny controls them. If Philip's resemblance to your majesty offends you, you could exile him to some place where the resemblance would have no meaning. There are times, Colbert, as much as you annoy me, when I suspect you of being a genius. You're right. I couldn't hang him. Not because he's my brother, but because it would be like hanging myself, watching myself dangle from the end of a rope. End the resemblance. Send him to a place where he never will be seen again. Of course. <laughs> I know how well you love power, Fouquet, but you'll never know complete power till you've been obeyed in a place like this. Only the king is obeyed here. I have no aspirations toward the throne, Your Majesty. Which is most fortunate. The moment I'm engaged in creating a kingdom for a man who might have such aspirations. Of course, I'm generous. I provide him with all the trappings of a king, even to a throne. True, this kingdom may be rather limited, in fact, it is limited. Limited to the walls of the cell above here. The most amusing thought, Your Majesty. Yes. It becomes positively hilarious when you think that Colbert gave me the idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a masterpiece. Of course, that was my idea. I thought it would be too confusing. Two kings, both looking so much alike. So I decided that one of the kings should wear the mask, so as to avoid all confusion quite ingenious. It covers the whole head and locks around the neck. Most ingenious. I wonder how long it takes the beard to grow, Fouquet. Imagine not being able to get that thing off your head and being strangled to death by your own beard. <laughs> of course, there'll only be one key which I shall keep. I think I'll wear it on a golden chain, here, next to my heart. confinement for life. To receive no visitors, to be treated as any other prisoner, except he must be spoken to as a king. Spoken to 
spoken to as a king. <laughs> Show Majesty. Good morning, Your Majesty. I'm sure Your Majesty will be delighted to know that the King of the Bastille is securely seated on his throne. It's his anniversary, you know. He began his reign a month ago today. I trust His Majesty finds his kingdom to his liking and his crown. I've been thinking. It may be necessary to create another such uh, kingdom for my esteemed colleague, Colbert. Huh? If you'll pardon me, I know Colbert. He'll dedicate his life to the liberation of Philip, which, of course, may be interpreted as a patriotic gesture, particularly if he should convince himself that Philip has an equal claim to your majesty's crown. A man dead of a broken neck cannot devote his life to anything. What? Hang Colbert? Oh, no. No, Your Majesty. Your Majesty forgets. Colbert is the friend of the people. They admire his honesty. One of the things about Colbert that irks me most is that, like Caesar's wife, he is above reproach. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Your Majesty. All men make mistakes. <laughs> Not Colbert. Well, I think he made a mistake when he signed this receipt. Mistake? Receipt for 50 francs? <laughs> Your Majesty, supposing a comma and three zeros appeared after the 50, making it 50,000 francs, Your Majesty would then ask the impregnable Colbert just what he did with the other 49,950 francs, and <laughs> he would have no answer. It's quite possible, isn't it, that the people wouldn't cheer quite so loudly for an embezzler, a criminal. Too bad my friend has not room for another medal. Your Majesty is thinking of a reward for my poor services. Uh, might I suggest Madame Fouquet would just love to be a duchess. <laughs> you know how women are. <laughs> <laughs> On the day that Colbert is hanged, Madame Fouquet shall become a duchess. Your Majesty. What a pity. Such a great patriot. <laughs> <laughs> Paris saw run through here. D'Artagnan, 
How did you get here? I have not forgotten the underground passageways, even after 20 years. Oh, but this is insane. There's a price on your heads, all of you. <laughs> Good one, I hope. Well, it's nice to be remembered. Isn't it enough? You are hunted, I'm about to be hunted. Why must you come here of all places? We had a rendezvous with Philip in Bordeaux, which he did not keep. Yes, I know. Where is Philip? Philip is in the Bastille. An iron mask on his head for life. What? Yes, the most fiendish invention of Louis. Now you must go. Your only hope to escape the rope, or worse, is to go while you have a chance. Go? Have you lost your courage? Bravery is a great thing when there's a fighting chance. Bravery is only great when there is no chance. Look, my friend, at any moment the King's men may be here. I'm already branded a criminal. Now I beg you to save your own lives. Well, Philip didn't think of saving his life. Are you willing to surrender France into the hands of a plunderer like Fouquet? And a king was half mad? I remember when you held France in your own hands. That was Louis XIII. This is the reign of Louis XIV. Go back the way you came. I'll not open that door until you've gone. We're through with running. Here, give me your coat. I'll open the door. Nothing of roads, my lord. I am only a servant. No, oh, pardon me. Oh, I do remember his mentioning Marseille. The road to Marseille. D'Artagnan, you are a beautiful liar. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> you see, we can deliver Philip. Just as easily. But delivering him is not enough. Remember the mask. Well, what can be put on can be taken off. You're a bold man, my friend. But in my gentler way, I'm also bold. The key. is Not only the key to Philip's liberation, but the liberation of all France. So you see, the boy of the birthday dinner and of Mademoiselle de la Valliere is Louis. The boy of the cathedral and of the balcony and who brought you back is Philip. Philip is my father's name. I've always loved him. Where will I find the key? The king wears it around his neck. Thank you. I'll do it. My dear. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Your Majesty. Good night. I said good night. Well, a royal finalist.
I might say this is a surprise, but it isn't. In fact, I've been expecting you for a long time. I've discovered that sooner or later all things come to a king who waits. Perhaps you would not have waited so long, Your Majesty, had you not been more pleasantly engaged. <laughs> the trouble with you, my dear, is that you're inclined to be a little too sensitive. I'm beginning to understand how many things a queen must overlook. Really? <laughs> Sit down, my dear. Sit down. You know, until tonight, I, I was very disappointed in the Spaniards. Because we're a jealous and hot-blooded people? Oh, no. Quite the contrary. We're also a most impulsive people. Quick to hate. Quick to love. After I'm queen, I hope to change your mind about the Spaniards. You can. Quite easily. Don't you find it a trifle sultry in here? I hadn't noticed, Your Majesty. Destiny of France is in your hands. You remember the way to the Bastille. How could I forget? I think you're the bravest girl I've ever known. It doesn't matter whether you bring Philip back as king of France, so long as you bring him back. Depend on this. Philip returns, or we stay. Time for rounds. Why go? Nothing ever happens. Thank you. 
Oh, Canyon. Sit down. Get this thing off my head. My brain's bursting. Yes, yes, I have the key. How could your own brother be such a monster? o'clock. Thirty three seeing ghosts again. Well. It turns, but it doesn't open. It's a double lock. A Chinese thing. I I don't remember. God just gone by. We must get out while there's still time. All clear. Francis to be found. It's not a dream, brother. Remember me, the Gascon rebel who amused you until you discovered he was your brother? You should remember this, too. One of your more clever inventions. No, it's not there. It's here. Go away. You're dead. Strangled. How fast does your own beard grow, brother? I'll give you anything. I'll recognize you. I'll make you rich, all of you. A million francs in gold. Two million. When you turned the lock on this, you locked out any mercy that might have been in my heart. You knew I was your brother, your twin. That we were almost one body, one life. You have, me have. But you forced my half to live in shadow and despair, so that your half might live in grandeur and glory. There is one law in life, brother, that not even a king can escape. The law of retribution. The pendulum of the clock of life swings so far in one direction, then very surely swings back. The pendulum is swinging for you, brother. The time has come when your half must live in the shadows. Not for what you've done to me, but for what you've done to the people of France. Not because I have suffered at your hands, but because they have suffered more. 
Not because you would have murdered me, but because you have murdered them. Because you betrayed a sacred trust. Because you've proven yourself unfit to live in the light of day. Fair exchange, brother. My kingdom for yours. Put it on her. Excellency, men came, gentlemen with swords. They choked me. Gentlemen with swords. Are you crazy? No one gets in here unless I open the door. Are any prisoners missing? No, no Excellency. Excellency. Oh, you fools, you're drunk. You think such lies can cover it? You neglect your duty and permit those dogs to wake me up again. Right. I'll attend to them first, and you later. Get out of my way. Take me out! Do you hear? Gold! I'll give you anything! I command you to let me out! I'm a king! I've never heard him scream before. No, Commandant. Sooner or later, they all go mad. Open the door! I have a better cure for madness than any doctor. <laughs> now then. Well, you do believe me, don't you? You've come to set me free. I'll make you rich. The fools to think they could do this to the king. Hurry. Be quick, I tell you, I'm the king. <laughs> so I've come to let you out, have I? I'm the king. You'll hang for this. Yes, your majesty. But after this, command in a whisper. But I'm the king. Now maybe I can get some sleep. Good night, your majesty. <laughs> but I am the king. Morning, Your Majesty. I trust you enjoyed a good night's rest. Oh, Fouquet, good morning. Pardon me. I, uh, I informed Madame Fouquet that Your Majesty has graciously promised to make her a duchess. Duchess? Why, yes. Uh, Colbert. Oh, yeah. His spy system works very well. It seems he was warned. He escaped my men at the house. But I'll have him before night. Every road is closed. Your Majesty, I am very happy to report that the tax on salt is yielding double the revenue we expected. Mm. And I'm sure you'll also be pleased with this. <clears throat> but Your Majesty, this rescinds the salt tax. I know. Have you ever tasted fish without salt, Fouquet? Fish? Without? Why, uh, uh... It's no good. No. Terrible. Yes. Besides, the people object. 
They don't like me. Oh. You can't eat fish without salt. Any more than you can make cloth without wool. Or bread without flour. So I have decided to remove all those taxes. But why, Your Majesty? Why? I had a dream, Fouquet. Do you know where bad kings go? Your Majesty, you cannot do this. I'm sure you're wrong. You spent your whole life assuring me that I could do anything. For instance, I could even hang you. Your Majesty. Your Majesty's in a jesting mood this morning. Yes. Amusing, isn't it? Very amusing. Your Majesty. Monsieur Fouquet, I regret my absence of last night. It would have given me great pleasure to have received you when you called with your friends. I'm told Your Majesty is seeking me in some haste. Oh, yes. I wanted you to proclaim these decrees, abolishing the taxes. Your Majesty, this is one of the great days of my life. But the receipt... Receipt? Oh, we found the money. It was all a mistake. If you'll excuse me, Your Majesty, I feel slightly indisposed. Of course, you must be very careful of your health. And I do hope Madame Fouquet will not be too unhappy. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. God, God, listen to me. I'll make you rich. <laughs> yes, I know. You're the king of France. A million francs in gold. <laughs> Look, ask me for anything. I'll give it to you. Anything. <laughs> but you don't understand. <laughs> you have to listen to me. <laughs> I can feel them growing. Growing? They'll strangle me. You've got to take it off. <laughs> What? Take off your majesty's crown? I should say not. <laughs> Why, you dog, I'll tell the commandant about this. Madam, lovely day. Take this to Fouquet, the king's minister, and receive five thousand francs reward. My son. There is one thing you must do, and quickly. You must marry Maria Teresa at once. Must? Well, that's the most pleasant thing I've heard since leaving Gascony. Once you have married Maria Teresa, and the people of Spain and our own country acknowledge her as Queen of France, there can be no question as to who is king. Her Royal Highness Princess Maria Teresa. Do you remember that day in your carriage? We watched the boy and girl run off across the fields. Philip. I feel just as they must have felt. Kobe would like to ask you a question. No, I think I'll ask this question myself. Oh, oh, most certainly, Your Majesty. Yes, Your Majesty. Even if the title is a little clouded? Even if there were no title. 
Even after I said to you, never trust the king. I can trust you. Oh, there's more to it than that. A technical question that must be settled before you can become queen. Do you love me? I've always loved you, Philip. It may be His Majesty who is getting married, but you, Your Excellency, will be the most handsome man at the ceremony. Certainly the best dressed. <laughs> the carriage of the princess has just passed over the bridge on the way to Fontainebleau. Really? How fortunate the bridge did not collapse. Your own guard is waiting with your carriage. Your Excellency, this person, a herdsman, insists upon speaking with you. A herdsman? What have I to do with a herdsman? What do you want? Uh, 5,000 francs. <laughs> For what? For a tin plate. with some silly writing on it. Plate? Writing? What do you mean? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Writing on a plate. It says, Philip of Gascony sits on the throne of France when everyone knows the king's name is Louis. Give me that plate. 5,000 francs, this is Your Excellency. Buy it. Philip of Gascony, throne of France. For the first time in my life, I was a fool. Send for the captain of my guard. Yes, Your Excellency. Take my carriage and my entire guard. Go to the Bastille. Take from his cell a prisoner who wears an iron mask. Deliver him to me at the church at Fontainebleau. But Your Excellency, the Bastille? Are you afraid of hanging, my friend? At this point, it's necessary for all of us to hang together, or we'll all hang separately. Yes, Your Excellency. among you who know why this should not be done, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. I see. My Lord Cardinal, I warn you to perform this marriage at your peril. That man is not the King of France. Our man is mad. Seize him. Stay where you are. He may look like the king. He may dress like the king. He may even speak like the king, but he is not the king. But do not fear me, Lord Cardinal. His Majesty, the King of France, will attend your ceremony. In fact, he's on his way at this moment. And I have an engagement to meet him on the Paris Fontainebleau Road. Wait, I'll go with you. Oh! Oh, Where are you going? After a murderer. And to bar the Paris road. I pledge my life that you are the only king that will come here by that road this day. You forget, my friend, that only a king can bar the road. We will bar the road. My lord cardinal, my lords and ladies, 
I beg your indulgence to deal with an enemy of France. Forgive me, my dear. I find I must dispose of another technicality before you can become Queen of France. of your liberation. You? Liberation? You let them do this to me! But your majesty, I... Fouquet and his king. We must fight. Let's fight at the top of the hill. The horses will be tired from the climb. How far is it now to Fontainebleau and the church? Two leagues, Your Majesty. Two leagues to revenge. Nothing must happen to my dear brother. He belongs to me. Well, we fight on foot. Surprise them as they come over the top of the hill. You three on this side, Philip and I over here. Take the hindmost. Get the captain first. Why don't the fools go on? We are attacked, Your Majesty. Philip delivers himself to us. Remind me to teach it to you sometime. You hurt? <laughs> Always remember to lick your wounds after the battle. Faster, driver! Faster!
find myself sorry for him when he's given me cause to feel nothing but hate. Your Majesty has other urgent, unfinished business. You may proceed, my Lord Cardinal. Who gives this woman unto this man? I claim that privilege. I join you in marriage, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Congratulations, my son. Now you are the greatest swordsman in France. D'Artagnan. Porters, Arthur's and Aravis will be waiting. You wouldn't want me to disappoint them. God save the king. He was a brave man. France will always need brave men. brave women to remind men of their duty. God save France.